In these days of plug and play, one could easily ask what is up with some kind of elaborate point build system such as Champions, even a perhaps modernized, uh, massaged, streamlined Champions. It's still, compared to any number of available systems today, going to be, in the words of even somebody sympathetic to the system, making up a character has certain qualities of a tax audit. Why would we bother? What is the point of fiddly points and then subtracting points and then dividing by points and anything of the sort? And I think there's a real answer to that question. There is a point in the process at which the trade-off of the costs and how much you have to spend and what you can do to adjust the costs becomes not merely a, a puzzle, but instead a direction. Instead, a point at which the expenditure that beefs it up here feels to you as though it's worth it relative to what you want for this character and, as I say, starts to provide direction for how other things are being spent. All of a sudden you would say, my goodness, of course, that dependence over there in the disadvantages, I am going to make that as big as it can be. I'm not going to try to minimize it as a disadvantage, I'm going to maximize it as a disadvantage because that plays off of everything that I spent a ton of points over here on in the powers. Why on earth do I want this particular characteristic to be this high? This character is begging for a 25 presence, which is quite high for a starting character. And this character over here, goodness, spending any points on starting presence, leave him at 10, leave that, stay down there. That's really important for this guy. The process of spending the points from scratch is something of a rising action to that point of engagement with the character as a starting sketch for play. There's something quite powerful to that. Bringing that out and maximizing it is one of my primary design considerations for Champions Now. Let's take a look at the unsuccessful case as the counterexample, the failure state that I and I think you want to avoid, especially when sitting down to the tax audit process and saying, you know, I could be playing this other game where I just pick up column A and I pick up column B and I can play my superhero and know what to do. No, this is a little different, a little more demanding and a little bit more high payoff, but what happens when the payoff doesn't occur? What are we looking at? I think all of us have experienced this. I certainly have, either as a game master looking glumly at this sheet that the player just handed me, or myself looking glumly at my sheet and saying, I, what am I gonna do here? What are the signs of such a failure state? Number one, emptiness. Emptiness. Hunted, major supervillain, 30 points, nothing. Infamously, code versus killing, 20 points, nothing. We don't see why, we don't see what, we don't see how, we don't see what this means to the character, we don't see in any way how it connects to any other piece of the character, of which there are many. There are so many pieces to a champion's character sheet that if you have something interesting on there, in and of itself, that you can't see the connection to anything else, it's not itself. It's not interesting. An aversion, an intense aversion toward killing by itself, disconnected to everything else, isn't, after all, interesting. It has no engine. Now, let's take a look at other aspects of emptiness, which is powers descriptions. Again, 
I think we've all seen the multi-power, energy blast, flight, force field. And that's all it says on there. There's no special effect even. Maybe there's a special effect like fire powers, fire powers, flight, energy blast, force field. Really? How is that fire powers? What do you mean by fire powers? Does the character, you know, burn people by accident or not? Uh, does the, you know, does it glow a dull red? Does it blast in sparks? I mean, what on earth are we talking about? And without these tedious paragraphs of description that try to lock down how play is going to go forever, that's not really what I mean. What we need is some kind of imagery. What we need is some kind of force behind the concepts that will jump out in play. Because it is that in easy, easy casual descriptiveness in play that really makes the powers live. Best example comes from my very first times playing champions and others too. Um, I'm going to quote a friend who had a character who could fly and there was some kind of very uh, reactive repulsor ray concept going on there where there was a lot of kinetic force of, you know, jerking things apart, of pushing against things. And the very first thing that happened, they had their characters fly and the character, you know, launches into the air and the player was just so happy looking back on that because the game master said, yes, and there's just the barest impact crater left behind this on the sidewalk when you take to the air. And the player knew the Game Master had got it. That this whole concept of what the power was had entered play and would always be in play even when it wasn't specifically described because it had been described that time and would be under any such circumstances in which special effects might matter. It was there. Having that as knowledge in play, as the experience of play, as a piece of how we do this is at the heart of Champions. Other examples which are so familiar include those uh, pointless origin stories. You know, Jody never knew why he had such terrible headaches. And then like five paragraphs of sort of middle school and high school and early college, you know, suffering headaches. And then in the last little paragraph, and then one day things just snapped when Jody saw, you know, the kitten run over. You know, he blasted the car into smithereens with the power of his mind. And then either, you know, then Jody became the hero so-and-so or then Jody became the villain so-and-so. And that's it. That's, that's, there you go. It's full of verbiage, much of it phrased in the same way from character to character, and all of it empty. Nothing there for us to work with in terms of story now. There's no way to know what the character is going to do or could do next. There's no way to think in terms of, you know, what would happen that makes this character interesting. What you have now is somebody who is perfectly capable of being slotted into a generic adventure module which is built for any heroes to just be slotted into and trotted off to the first clue, trotted off to the briefing, trotted off to the first crisis step by step as dictated by the adventure scenario. In other words, no kind of play at all. My thoughts on how this can be not overcome and combated, but how there can be an end run around it so that it doesn't really arise, or if begins to arise, can be easily spotted and corrected with the most minor conversation, no negotiation. That's where those two phrases come from. One, what are the powers? Oh, yes, well, the powers are the green radiant. No, 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 not in fiction description of the powers. Not the aliens came and beamed the earth with psychic rays and now people are having psychic powers. I'm not talking about that, what is the powers, at all. I'm talking about what are the powers in some kind of 
substantive experiential way. Some perhaps visual way, some perhaps descriptive fictional way, but not in terms of explaining them. So instead, uh, if you look at the various options I provide, which are not in any way supposed to be a canonical list, but an idea of how to do it, you'll see things like Technocosmic. Okay, all right, that's what kind of title this is. And one might say, run, but no comics company locks it down that hard. And I would say, that's right, we're not talking about a comics company or a franchise. We are talking about a title. We're talking about a particular comic book. And in those, you'll find that these two phrases that I talk about are surprisingly coherent and specific. So, another one. Let's see. Oh, we can get all grimdark. Inevitably, your powers themselves will kill you. Both of these are taken from known comics that any number of you have spotted already. That's okay. We can even get a little more sort of social about the powers, such as what I'm doing in the San Antonio game right now, where all it says about the powers is that they are proprietary, that significant entities such as governments or transnational corporations actually own powers and treat them as licensed properties. So you see, sometimes we're talking about how they look, sometimes we can talk about what they are. Here's another good one. Mental and magic discipline and martial arts. And that's one thing. They are one thing. Mental magic discipline, martial arts, that's a thing right there, a total package, not a combination. And say, there's your powers. They could be descriptive of the powers like that. They could be some sort of social description. Another thematic one that I use in the example is that uh, heroes sometimes aren't and villains sometimes are heroes. And so you have this whole let's, let's play with what powers have to do with being a superhero and supervillain and that it's not in any way a dichotomy. So sometimes it's thematic like that. And then it could be any number of things which are purely visual, like techno-cosmic and stuff like that. So stick with that kind of approach toward your power statement. Now, don't forget the second statement. The second statement has nothing to do with superpowers and shouldn't mention them. The, sec the second statement is very much a genre statement as one would do for any kind of pop fiction story. It doesn't have to absolutely match the categories that you'll find you know, on Netflix or something like that, but it can. It could tweak them or reverse them or anything like that. You could say just straightforwardly, this is murder crime drama. Done. Or this is, um, you know, slice of life, ordinary lives, regular people. Or you could say, uh, one of my favorites that I'm working with right now, families, love and lies. Anything of that kind. It could be lots of action implied, things like, uh, you know, black ops and espionage, you know, life during wartime. It could be completely emotional, like a couple of the ones that I mentioned. But any such statement, armed with those two statements, and the second one should include a location, a location with which one person at the table is intimately familiar. Get those together. And when you make your character, those are your touchstones for what's happening. Those are your touchstones for your initial decisions. And soon, they won't even be touchstones. They will be so foundational that all your other decisions, and note, you had full, you have carte blanche for, you know, all kinds of things. Even the ones that seem kind of specific, like the, the martial arts one, there's some scope to bring in any power in the book, any skill in the book, any other concept, particularly concept for the character that isn't paid for by points. 
their socioeconomic status, their ethnicity, their point of origin, their outlook on things, all of those are wide open. Working with all of that off of those two concepts. So recall I was talking about this kind of story now effect when you look at this character you know, blooming numerically underneath your fingers and the tax audit is starting to be a matter of, of great fun. You're like, oh, well, of course, you know, this has got to undergo this limitation right there. And then you jump over and say, and this skill that goes with that. And okay, we've got this kind of, this, this guy. And you're starting to go, ooh, this gal. They're going places without planning what those places may be because you can't. So even better. Looking at this, looking at what you can do to excite another person with it, when they see the special effects of the powers, when they see the applications of the point rules, when they look at the disadvantages, when they see the very brief verbal sketch based on who this person is in ordinary social terms. Now we're talking we're looking at something which is not only playable, but is playing itself practically before you start talking. 